What is up people? Welcome to your 54th and hopefully the last tutorial in this little three part series. And before I get started I just want to tell you guys about one error that I did. I spelled listener wrong like I always do. And just change that to T-E-N-E-R. And uh, if you have more than third grade education you should know that but I don't. So now we can go ahead and continue with the rest of our tutorial. So pretty much in this handling class or the class that handles um, the event what we did is we took a string variable and we set it equal to an empty string or a string with nothing in it and then we say alright if they type something in the box number one and press enter then we're gonna say alright we're gonna change that string to field one equals whatever you typed in if they did it in field two field three or the password field uh, that's what we're gonna do so now we all we pretty much did is we changed that string variable so if they type Bucky for the string variable um, this pretty much changes the string variable and now the last thing we need to do in this class is pretty much output it on the screen somehow so this is the last line so don't worry just type J option pane and why do we get to use this because we imported it up here at J option pane and what this pretty much does is pretty much just a blank window and what we're gonna do is show message dialog make sure I didn't spell that wrong too and it's gonna take two parameters the first parameter it takes is null don't worry about that it has to do with positioning and the second one it takes is your variable you want to output in that string so now let me walk you guys through this one last time we imported a bunch of stuff to use that's not important the second thing we did is we pretty much built a window um, using JFrame which we did in the last tutorial you should know what, how we did that now here gets here we get to the good stuff what you definitely need in order to handle events is a uh, pretty much an event handling class that implements action listener and we built that class right here now once we made that class we can create objects for that class and we created a class or excuse me an object named handler so anytime that you use this object it's going to refer to this class right here and after we built this class and we built this object we're going to go ahead and add that object to each one of these items now we gave each of these items some functionality so before they were just sitting there and now once you press enter on them they actually do something and what does has to do with this method right here now inside your class that handles events you need this method and you need to call it action performed this is a built-in method that has to do with the action listener class this method gets executed automatically whenever an event occurs so the event that's occurred is enter so whenever they press enter what's going to happen is it's going to create an empty string it's going to test what you're going to want to change that string to and then it's going to output it right there so this is all the hard stuff we did right here so copy that and do exactly as i did now that we made all the hard stuff we can go ahead and just execute it like we always do so my main thing is called um, apples you can do anything you want the first thing we're going to need to import in the only thing so don't worry import javax javax dot swing dot jframe and this just make sure that we can use windows in our main method right here so now let's go ahead and start calling our um, uh, object so let's go ahead and create a new object called Bucky or whatever. And my class was named Tuna. You can name it uh, or whatever year. You can name your object um, whatever you want, but make sure. Well, you should know how to do this right now. Equals a new object from the class Tuna. And the second line we want to put is the close operation like we did before. So we're going to take that object, which is pretty much the thing we just created, that window, and set default there we go close operation I didn't I was too lazy to type it all and the argument that this is going to take it's all this crap in my way is jframe dot exit 
underscore on underscore close and like before this just means that whenever we hit X we want to exit the program why why they don't do it automatically I don't know but you need to do it yourself the next thing we're going to want to do is set the size of the window and we do this by setting the size and we're just going to set this to something like 350 mm, by 100 I think what the heck was that? I just had like a piece of skin in my mouth or something. Pretty disgusting. By the way, I got something really disgusting to tell you um, next tutorial or if I have time at the end of this tutorial. But it's a disgusting story that I heard the other day, so I'll tell you then. Next, last thing we need to do is set the visibility. So set visible. I need to learn how to spell. So, and we'll just set this to true. And now let me walk you guys through this one last time. So now, make sure we don't have any errors anywhere, and go ahead and click OK, 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 and hopefully this works. And now, here is what we built. Go ahead and type Bucky, press Enter, it says Field1 equals Bucky. Enter text here, go ahead and type um, Fred, Freedy, Field2 equals Freedy, uneditable, look this. I'm typing, I'm typing, can't edit it, so go ahead and press enter in that, uneditable, and this password, um, by default, if you press enter, it's my pass, but you can go ahead and change that to something like that, and then it changes to GFGDS. So I'm going to talk you guys through this one last time, how this works. Um, if you don't want to listen to me, you can go ahead and watch my next tutorial, or watch some uh, videos of like dogs doing silly things online, but... Um, for those of you guys who really want to figure out how this works, I'm going to tell you right now. This all, well, let's go ahead and just skip the good stuff right here. In order to handle events in Java, you need an event handling class. And that class needs to implement Action Listener. And what Action Listener allows you to do is put that listener on something, which means, alright, I'm going to wait for an event to happen and once it happens I'm gonna do some code and that once we have this class we can go ahead and create an object and why do we need to create an object well we need to create an object because this add action or add action listener method it takes an object as its argument so that's why we needed to create an object and the object it takes as the argument is how it wants to handle that event so why can't it just automatically know what event to handle because of this class right here well sometimes you have different events in different classes so that's why so now once we have this class that handles the event and the object built we can go ahead and add some functionality to this so what this method does is get performed automatically whenever you call this class it's kind of like a constructor but kind of not so and what this does is take the event as the argument, which is in this case the um, pressing of the enter button. What this does is says, all right, if event get source, which means where the thing occurred, equals item one, if it occurred in text box item number one, then what we're going to do is set the string equal to whatever was inside that text box. If it occurred in item two, set the string that was it what was equal to in that text box. If it occurred in number three, set the string equal to what was in that text box. Four, same thing. And now, once we set our string variable to something, depending on what was inside that text box, we're just going to output it in the J option pane, which was that little checkbox, I mean that little box at the end that pretty much just said um, Greg or Bucky or whatever I typed in there. So that is your tutorial on how to handle events. I'm sorry it was really long, but it was also really necessary. So I guys, I hope you understand pretty much the basics of what I did. Um, we'll be going over this um, a little later, so if you don't, um, you'll probably figure it out. But thank you guys for watching, thank you for uh, supporting my channel, and for all the awesome comments and some of the not so awesome ones. But again, I thank all of you guys, all of the people who watch my videos. So um, I can't wait to do the next tutorial, so I'll see you then.